following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The Garden of Eden, Part 3. As uh, you remember, we were explaining in detail about the symbols which are related with the Garden of Eden. And still, we didn't talk in the previous lectures about uh, the tempting serpent and all of that which happened, as you know, which is written in the chapter 3 of the book of Genesis. It is uh, very important for us to comprehend that part 2 in order to uh, deeply comprehend uh, this uh, marvelous mystery of the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden <coughs> is, as we stated, the physical body together with the vital body, microcosmically speaking. We are not referring to the Garden of Eden located in the fourth dimension, but to our own particular individual garden, which we stated we carry uh, always. And this uh, is related uh, to the vital body, which is the superior part of the physical body. So then, if uh, we understand, if we comprehend that the Garden of Eden is formed by our physical body and vital body, which in Kabbalah is called Malkut and Yesod, we have then to talk about the two trees. The two trees which are in the middle of the garden. Then we have to visualize the physical body and to inquire where uh, these two trees, the tree of life and the tree of good and evil, are located. So, the spinal medulla with uh, its two nervous systems taking into, taking into account that the brain and its spinal medulla is the central nervous system. When I said plus the two, I'm referring to the grand sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, which form the three nervous systems, main nervous systems, which are connected to the different parts, different organs, muscles of our physical body. As you remember, we have stated 
that uh, these three nervous systems are related to the three primary forces uh, of the tree of life. The first triangle, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Keter, Chokma, Bina. These three primary forces, energies, descend from above, as we explained in uh, previous lectures, from the light, which is that sephira dat, which is where ja and hava are united and forming the, the light, the Eden, which is that the meaning of the word Eden above the upper Eden, where father and mother, Ava and Aima are united. Through them, the forces of the three primary forces descend into our physical body. This is what we say in the different lectures. The Akashic forces from heaven penetrate into the physical body through the three, three nervous systems. And this is how God nourishes the physical body. This is how Christ, in other words, enters into the physical body in order to nourish the vital body, physical body, through the tree of life. This tree of life is the spinal medulla and its nervous systems. This is what we have to comprehend and understand. And uh, the soul is placed in the middle of this garden, as uh, you remember. And uh, we explained that uh, the soul is Tifereth, the human soul. We are souls, part of that Tifereth, which is called in Kabbalah, beauty, Tifereth. Part of it, which is the embryo of soul, the consciousness, the essence, is what is in the middle of this garden. This is how you explain and how you understand that God places the soul in the middle of the garden. This God that we are talking here is that Ruach Elohim, which is translated as the Spirit of God, or the Spirit of the Elohim, in other words. We explain in other lectures that this uh, Spirit of the Elohim, this individual, particular Spirit that each one of us has inside, is our Father. This Father is what in Kabbalah is called Chesed, which is, means mercy. This he said of mercy is the Ruach Elohim. As you see, that in the beginning was uh, hovering upon the face of the waters, according to the book of Genesis. So this is our own particular spirit. But this particular spirit is a child, is a son of the three primary forces through delight which is the upper Eden. And that's why uh, when we talk about the Son of God in our own particular individuality, that is our own spirit, the Son of the Elohim. And that Son of the Elohim is what descends into the physical body in order to create is uh, hovering in the water, sexual waters of Yesod, in order to create our physical body. And then after that, he sends his son, his child, which is the human soul, which in this case is ourselves. We are part of that human soul, which is called the embryo, the essence, the consciousness. And of course, as we explained in the previous lecture, in the beginning, 
when God is uh, planting this garden, he is doing it in the womb of our mother. So in this case, the womb of our mother is that Eden where the Holy Spirit is creating another garden of Eden that will be our physical body together with a vital body in order for us to keep it, to maintain that garden and to take advantage of it. That's why after nine months, when the physical body is done, is created, the Garden of Eden is already made. But as you remember, the Bible explains that these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. This is what I'm explaining here, the generations, the creation of the heavens and the earth. The heavens, in this case, is the upper Eden, the light, and the earth, the lower Eden, which is translated as pleasure. This lower Eden is a physical body that is being created in the womb of our mother. Thanks to the river that descends from above, from the light, upper Eden, which is the action of the three primary forces in the womb of our mother. So then the three primary forces placed in the physical body in the womb of our mother are creating another garden of Eden, which is our physicality. And little by little is developing and is coming out of the womb of our mother after nine months. And this is how you explain the, the verse. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In a day when Jahava Elohim, which is father mother in heaven, made the earth and the heavens. And after that says, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. For Jahava had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. In other words, when the newborn is coming out, still those elements that God gives us in order to become a cosmos human are in potentiality in our physical body, as you know. The physical body and the vital body contain the archetypes that we need in order to develop the man within. So that's why it says that, that uh, there was not a man to till the ground because only the soul is within the body. As we are right now, of course, uh, you see a newborn baby. The, that uh, uh, newborn physical body is that beautiful garden of Eden in symbology. The part of that human soul, that part of Tifereth, is within the body. So still there is not a man there. It's just a, a part, an embryo of soul that could become a man if when he's uh, mature, when the physical body reaches maturity, which is about 21 years old, that soul receives the clues of the mysteries of Eden and then starts working with his physicality and vitality and creating within himself or developing, we will say, all of those elements which in the verse 5 of the chapter 2 in the book of Genesis states, every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, 
for Jehovah Elohim didn't cause to rain upon the earth. It means that this individual still doesn't know the mysteries of that, the mysteries of sexual transmutation. So there is no rain upon that earth, which is Eden. There is no water there to feed those archetypes, those elements that everybody has in his physicality. So we need to know that in order to take advantage of the Garden of Eden. It says there that there went, there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. That mist of the earth, of course, is that uh, sexual force that develops and rises as the physical body is developing to the 21 years old. If you study the sexual glands in relation with your physical development, you see how the uh, testicles and the ovaries are related with the different glands of the physical body and how the individual physically is develop, developing his uh, glands, his physicality. In other words, how that uh, Garden of Eden, little by little, is growing, bl blooming, thanks to that mist from the earth. That mist from the earth is that fire, sexual fire, that uh, the body takes hormones in order to develop. Of course, if the individual in himself or herself doesn't start uh, performing uh, sexual activities as masturbation and other sexual degenerations, then they interrupt the activities of this mist that unfortunately in this day and age, all youth, when they are uh, sexually feeling the hormones of the sexual energy, they start performing masturbation and uh, performing the sexual act, homosexuality and all of that, which of course interrupts the normal development of the Garden of Eden as it is written in the Bible, which is our physicality. And that's why it is written there that Jehovah Elohim said to, the, to Adam, which in this case, of course, represents the human soul. Because many times we said that Tifereth, the human soul, is that part that we have within that has to learn how to take care of this garden, of this physic physicality. And that's why it is written there that uh, out of the ground may the Lord God, or Jehovah Elohim, to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Now, what is this tree that is pleasant to the sight? We, in ourselves, as we know, if we don't interrupt this development, when we reach maturity, the 21st years of age, we are really trees which are pleasant to the sight. You see, when everybody is young, that youth, that beauty of the sexual force emerges and blooms. Hmm? So, in itself, physically speaking, we are just a tree pleasant to the sight. Hmm? Because then that tree pleasant to the sight has all the forces of the tree of life, which is the spinal medulla and the three nervous systems, and activity. All the hormones, all the forces of the three primary forces are expressing themselves through the physical body. This is why when you see uh, young people, they are trees really pleasant to the sight because they still are, of course, expressing that. I repeat, it's very rare in this day and age to see these young people pleasant to the sight because unfortunately, now they learn from young age 
how to extract that beauty of the physical body, which is the sexual hormones, through masturbation and through many other sexual vices that are very popular in this day and age. And of course, by inhaling also elements which are uh, poison for the physical body, which will ruin the plants, the herbs of the Garden of Eden, which are, of course, inhaling elements like marijuana, tobacco, or drinking alcohol, which, unfortunately, uh, among the youth, this is very common in order to show that uh, they have the power to control poison elements in their bodies. They get drunk, they get uh, drugged with, uh, many, in many ways. So that's the way in which we interrupt the normal development of this garden that we can take advantage of. In the childhood, the soul, since the ego that we bring from other lives still is not within the body, because in order for the ego to penetrate into that body, we need to develop the personality. We talk about that in other lectures. So the soul is just there. The few percentage of soul that we have is inside this garden and enjoying the fruits of the tree of life. In other words, Christ, the three primary forces, the Akashic energy that is sends from above and penetrates into, into the physical body, is giving a lot of fruits, senses, as we explain, the five senses plus the seven chakras are the twelve fruits from which the essence eats and enjoys the energy, the forces that are not only in this physical world, but the, in the internal worlds. And this is how the soul enjoys all the fruits of the tree of life. Unfortunately, little by little, the devil penetrates in the Garden of Eden. And this is precisely here the point and we have to understand. Fundamentalists always place the Garden of Eden, of course, in the past. They did not realize that they carry themselves because it's their physical body. They also blame Satan and Lucifer and many other beings outside of themselves without understanding that this Satan, this devil, also is within them. We carry that. So this devil that is called the serpent, the tempting serpent of Eden, is of course the ego that enters little by little as the personality is being developed thanks to the wrong teachings of the parents and teachers, etc., etc., of the society. Of course, we have to understand how the ego acts to the Garden of Eden. And we explain that in many lectures, that the three brains, which are related to the three nervous systems, is how the ego acts and take advantage of the three primary forces in order to squander the Christic energy. And he does it, of course, through the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because the ego appears and is created through the knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This tree of knowledge of good and evil, good and evil, as we explain, are called Adam and Eve in the, in the Bible. Yin Yan, Ida Pingala, Ob and Od, the two polarities of the sexual energy that are rooted in the testicles and the, and the ovaries in the woman. So the tree of good and evil, of the two polarities, the two forces that uh, deal with uh, good and bad are exactly in the sexual organs. Because through it, of course, the tree of life 
nurtures itself also to the sexual energy. That's why it is stated that the tree of life and the tree of good and evil share its roots. Those roots are the testicles and the ovaries. Because those testicles and those ovaries are related, of course, with the nervous systems. But uh, the tree of good and evil, which is also in the middle, the sexual organs, act independently. But as you see, both trees are in the middle of the body. The medulla and the sexual organs. Because when you observe the sexual organs, the two testicles, you observe that in the vital body, there are two serpents or two nervous channels that are entwined along the tree of life. We stated in other lectures that in the middle of the spinal column, there is another serpent that relates to the tree of life. And the two serpents that are entwined in the spinal column are precisely Ida Pingala, Adam and Eve, Yin and Yang, Ob and Od, which are, of course, in any child, up and nourishing. The tree of life and the tree of good and evil are acting together. Unless that child begins, as in, unfortunately in this day and age, many young people, many very young young, are already fornicating, means ejaculating the sexual matter out of their bodies. Because the sexual matter that is called semen, whether in the man or in the woman, because there's masculine semen and feminine semen, that essence, that water, is what nourishes the two trees. You know, when you have trees, when you have a plant, you have to take care of those plants every day by watering them, right? And of course, those plants are growing and being healthy when you water them carefully and you know how to do it because they absorb the water, the humidity from also the earth because they are nourished themselves, they are nourishing themselves also from the elements which are in the earth. Or, in other words, which are in the garden, right? As we said, this earth, this gr uh, ground, this garden, is our physical body. That's the matter, you see? That is church. And, of course, the water of this physical body is the semen, the sexual matter. And this is how the tree of life is nourished, and the tree of good and evil as well. But it's written from the tree of good and evil, sexual energy, you shall not eat of it. Because in the day that you eat from it, you uh, should really die. Of course, it is obvious that if you take your sexual force out of your body, your body will decay. And this is what normally happens with everybody. When they are young, they are sexually potent. Immediately, they are squandering the sexual energy. And then the, the tree of life, which is the medulla and all the nervous, don't receive that strength. And eventually, uh, old age appears and the uh, physicality decays. We are not longer a tree pleasant to the sight because they are decaying. We are decaying. And we are decaying because we are abusing of the tree of good and, uh, good and evil, which is sexuality. And uh, we are also allowing our ego to extract the energy which we have within, which is, in this case, the devil, Satan, that we have within. Now, of course, this uh, fornication, this uh, spasm or orgasm, that is precisely the original sin of the human being, is an activity of animals. If you observe uh, dogs, pigs, horses, etc., you observe that when they perform the sexual act, they reach the orgasm, the spasm, 
that is normal among the animals. So this uh, fornication is uh, common among the animals. And as you know, we were evolving from the mineral kingdom, from the plant kingdom, into the animal kingdom, and finally into this intellectual animal kingdom, in which we learn that we should not fornicate, in which we learn that we should not eat from the tree of good and evil as animals. Because we can enjoy all the fruit of the tree of good and evil if we don't reach the spasm and, or, or the orgasm of animals. That's the clue. But unfortunately, as we are still animals, we bring the inheritance of the past through our blood. The blood is the vehicle of fire, whether fire from above or from below, as we already taught in different lectures. We explained that the blood in the physical organism is created thanks to the activity of the liver, the spleen, and other organs of the digestive system. That blood is created and uh, in the evolving instinctual manner. So that blood, that river, enters and it, of course, brings into the physical body the past inheritance from our animal kingdom. And we were irrational animals. Enters there. Because in nature, everything recapitulates. Even though we have human physical bodies, still the blood in the liver and spleen and all the areas of the abdomen are creating that that we call venom blood. A venom blood that uh, runs in our veins, that uh, carries the animal inheritance that relates to what we call the infraconsciousness of nature. The infraconsciousness of nature is related, of course, with those animal aspects that everybody has. And through that is how the serpent enters to tempt Eve. Now, listen carefully. According to the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve were created and placed in the garden. Talking individually, in our physicality, we discovered that the tree of life has two polarities, as you know, good and evil. Adam and Eve, yin and yang, ob and ov. So Adam is that, uh, that the Bible called Tob, good part of ourselves, which relates to the brain. And is connected to the testicles, of course. So that Adam, Tob, good, relates to Pingala. That part of ourselves that developed the brain, understanding all the parts of the head. And that's the serpent related to the solar forces. When we said solar forces, we are referring to the solar forces of Christ. But also the lunar forces are active in our physical body. And the lunar forces are related with procreation, with creation, together with the solar. This is the two polarities, sun and moon. And the, this lunar polarity is Ida, which the Bible called Hava, Eve, which is the mother of the living. Hmm? The mother of the living. Mother of life, of course. The one that multiplies. 
This serpent, Ida, Kava, Eve, a Yin, or Ob, Kabbalistically speaking, which is in the left of the spinal column, relates to the other testicle, but also develops the genitalia in any sex, whether it's feminine or it's masculine. So you find here that Hava Eve relates to the left uh, serpent or the caduceus of Mercury and develops the genitalia. Plus Adam relates to the brain, develops the brain. You see, you, this is how you see how the tree of life and the, uh, the tree of good and evil are related. So when you talk about Eve, individually speaking, immediately you know that you're talking about the left serpent, the lunar force, and also your genitals, your sexual energy, and your genitalia, whether it's masculine or feminine body that you have. Because we can talk about also the division of sexes, in which the man is called the Adam and Eve is called the female, but, uh, the woman. But that is not what we're talking here. Also, you have to understand that the two polarities go, go in different ways. Uh -huh. But here now, we're talking about only our physicality. So when you read the Bible and you read about Eve, immediately you have to put your mind, your imagination, and your sexual organs. That's Eve. If you talk about Adam, and then you talk and put the imagination in the brain. That's Adam and Eve. Right? And they are related, I repeat, with the two polarities, the two serpents of the caduceus of Mercury. The serpent, solar serpent, Pingala, with Adam. And the serpent of the left, I Ida, with Eve. In that way, you understand how the tree of life relates. Right? To the two polarities and to the brain, to the, to the medulla, and to all the organism. From that point of view, we understand that the physical body has two wombs. As we talked in the previous lecture, there are two mems. The closed mem, or the letter Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet, and the open uh, mem. So there is the womb, the symbol of the womb, which relates to the waters. Because mem is related with water. Whether the waters from above or the waters from below. The waters from above are called Shamayim, which the Bible translates as heaven, created with Da'at. The, the, the waters from below is Mayim, which is the waters from Yesod, which we're talking here right now, because this is, we are talking with the waters of Yesod. But in our physical body, of course, we have the replicate the double of what is above is here below. This is you have to understand. That's why when you see the tree of life as a symbol, you see the physical body there represented in all the sephiroth. Because those trees are together. So then I said we have two wounds. <coughs> in this case, better to correct this statement. There are two wombs, because the only one that has a womb is a woman. Uh -huh. So they say the woman has two wombs, because there are two wombs. But we also have a womb, which is the second womb, which is the medulla. You see, the spinal medulla is a second womb. And this is what we have to understand. Because this second womb, the spinal medulla, is through which God creates or elaborates. While the first womb that we know that is in the female body is where the physicality is created, where the Garden of Eden is developed during nine months, as we were explaining. So, Adam and Eve can create in the physical world by 
acting through the trio of good and evil, which is sexuality. As you know, it is not necessary to explain how to create in this physical world because even the animals know that and they don't have intellect. Because female animals have the womb, the animal possesses sexually the female, the female becomes pregnant, and in her womb develops a physical body related to her own species. As well, in the intellectual animal kingdom, we were created in that way, as we were explaining. But about the second womb, only the intellectual animal that has three brains can use it. A cow, a bull, a horse, a pig, a cat, a dog cannot utilize that womb. Cannot create anything there. Because it needs to know how. It needs to have intellect, reasoning, and willpower in order to fecundate the second womb. And that is the spinal medulla. Of course, relates to the tree of life. And uh, in order for us to fecundate that medulla, we know and we know to learn how to utilize the two polarities of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Remember that, physically speaking, we have the two polarities, whether we are a woman or a man. We understand that. But if this man wants to create a physical body, this man needs to possess, sexually speaking, this woman. And this woman, of course, had to receive the man, the sexual material man, in order to be uh, pregnant. This is how the Bible explains that uh, in the Garden of Eden, there were uh, fruit trees and uh, yielding fruit trees. Or yielding, I mean, yielding fruit trees. This is the two difference here. When you say yielding fruit trees, it's referring to the man. When you read only fruit trees, it relates to the woman. Yielding is because the man has a capacity to yield, to give the seed. When the man yields, gives the seed, the fruits of his own tree, which is the body, and then that seed, which is the sperm, the zoosperm, penetrates into that other tree, which is the woman. And then the woman blooms and becomes a fruit tree. Only a female is a fruit tree. He blooms and gives birth. But you know that you need the activity of the two trees. Likewise, if in your spiritual womb, your medulla, you want to develop the trees which still are in potentiality, the herbs, the plants that the book of Genesis there are not yet developed. If you want to develop those archetypes, you need, of course, the activity of Adam and Eve because the two waters have to be in activity. The two waters, in order to create within that uh, spinal medulla, the man that the book of Genesis says, still there was not a man to till the ground. So that man has to be created. The fact that we have a physical body with a human shape doesn't give us the right to be called human being or man. The soul which we have within has the duty of developing all of those archetypes, all of those elements in the physical body and to create within that Adam that the Bible talks about, that man that we need to be created that has to till the ground and that has to name the animals and that is the king of nature. As you see, the physical body is a replica of the whole cosmos, of the whole nature. 
if you are not a king of your own particular nature, of your own particular earth, your own particular garden, how are you going to be a king of the universe? You have to perform that within because which is inside reflects in the outside. The interior is the reflection of the exterior and the exterior the reflection of the interior. So to call these people in this day and age human beings is a joke of a very bad taste because they don't control their own Garden of Eden. They have to control it, have to develop those elements, those archetypes within themselves in order for the man to exist and to till the ground. Well, but for that, we had to defeat the tempting serpent of Eden that enters into the physical body through the blood. That tempting serpent comes on from, from the past. Through the physicality, through the infraconsciousness of nature, and tempt us to perform the sexual act as animals, because we are still our animals. But we receive the commandment. Now we read with our intellect, because a horse cannot read the Bible or any other sacred book. A cat also cannot. But we can. And we receive there the commandments, the rules, and only have to become a human being. And it stays there, you shall not eat from the tree of good and evil. And we are explaining here. Of course, is written in clue, in order for those that develop understanding can understand what, how to do. Because you have to reach a certain level in order to develop that within. And then that's how you understand that it's written in the Bible. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which, the, which Jehovah Elohim had made. You see? How does Jehovah Elohim made that serpent? Well, in the animal kingdom, that serpent is active. It's the instinctual animal activity, the sexual instinct. It acts in any animal. And of course, a brute animal that has no reasoning fornicates, reach the orgasm, this spasm. So and when we receive this physicality, this human physicality, that serpent enters through the blood, and that's why it is it's more subtle than any beast of the field, or the physical body, obviously. And he said unto the woman, you see, he doesn't say unto the brain. Remember that when we said woman is below and man is above, brain. Because the woman, if you see even in physically speaking, the woman is the one that creates. After receiving the seed of the man, the woman takes nine months in order to create a body. So in reality, the woman is, that has more responsibility in the creation than the man. And the proof is nine months. So then, that's why the serpent is tempting the woman. But in this case, it's not the female body that is tempting. It's a sexual organ, which is precisely Eve. Because the sexual organ, whether in the man or in the woman, is the giver of life. Or mother of the living. This is what you have to understand. It's the mother of the living. So then, the serpent tempts the sexual organ. Because there is where you find the hormones. When you develop physically, you start sensing your hormones in your sexual organ. And you want answers. Jan goes to his parents, brothers, sisters, friends, teachers, to ask for answers. What is going on with my body? All of a sudden, I as a, I'm a boy, but I'm now having a very low voice. My throat is changing. And I learned in Kabbalah that my throat 
is related with the at. Because if you see the tree of life, you see that the three primary forces of the first triangle are related with the head. But that which is below is here in the throat. The logos, the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. That is sexual energy pronounced through the voice. That's why when the man is reaching maturity, his voice changes. Because the activity of the sexual glands in relation with the throat. And of course, he is feeling these hormones, not only in the throat, but in all his organism. He wants answers. What to do with this sexual force? Unfortunately, the answers are always wrong. Because the tempting serpent of Eden, which is tempting him through the sexual organs, also find answers in other tempting of serpents of eating of other men and women that are already tempted, that are defeated by, this, by the tempting of eating because they are fornicators. Go to the doctor, a fornicator doctor, and say, well, doctor, what do you think I should do with your sexual energy? The fornicator doctor with a big title there and teaching in the university will say, well, masturbate. Why? Because he is a slave. He is a victim of the tempting serpent of eating since young age. Or go with the priest. The priest knows the Bible, but doesn't know the clues that we're talking here. And will, of course, if not advising, maybe uh, starting something queer there with this boy or girl, as you know. Because the ego is inside. The devil, Satan, the ego, is inside. Because this ego that we have goes and works through that blood that comes from the past in our organism. We want to defeat the devil, Satan, then we have to start not nurturing it through the activities of the physical body, which is animal, animal activities, which act through the sexual organs. That's the beginning, because that's the, the, the very beginning of the animal force. Then, of course, that is what we call the beast, of what the Book of Revelation called the beast, is 166. Everything is, of course, a mystery. So then, the, <coughs> the serpent says unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Of course, we can enjoy of the tree, because the tree of the garden, the tree of life, we can enjoy it, we can we share it. But the woman says, because he's in relation, of course, with the sex. And the woman, the sexual organ, said unto the serpent, the blood force of the animal kingdom, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, of all the physical body. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Of course, this tree, which is a sexual organ, is touched by every young through masturbation, unfortunately. So they are already defeated because, unfortunately, they find this type of knowledge, degenerated knowledge of masturbation in many ways in this day and age, in this Kali Yuga. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Of course, through the use of the sexual energy, which is Ida, you see, as you see, procreation, Eve, sexual organs, are related with procreation. And only to procreate as animals, you have to reach the orgasm. But then we learn how to reach the orgasm, the spasm, not even for procreation, just for fun. And what happened? That we lose contact with the tree of life and our physical senses are opened. That was happening in the past. The eyes are open of the physical plane. And we identify with this physical world. 
and we forgot about the inner self. At this society, as much they fornicate, more they attach to the physical world. That is what we call the Kundabafer organ, which developed, develops with fornication. That's why this uh, Hava is called evil. Good and evil. It has a duality. Because through the sexual organ is how we descend into Klippa. Uh -huh. Of course, the woman, the sexual organ, could act in different ways. But when he's tempted or tempted by the serpent, by the sexual force, the animal force, he fornicates, ejaculates the force, and then immediately the psyche connects the physical body no longer with the upper Eden from delight from Jahava, because Jahava he is delight in that. And that Jahava from that works through that Ida, that serpent, which is called Eve. When that Eve, the sexual organ, fornicates, then the serpent that was connected to Jahava, to that, receiving that delight from above, no longer receive it because it's going down. It goes immediately, falls. It falls down and takes the elements from Klippoth, from hell, from inferno, into the physical body, inside, and poison, destroy the consciousness, the soul, in other words. This is how we created ego. The clipotic forces are called evil, or devolving, in other words. The devolving forces of clipoth are connected to us through ida, through our sexual organs. Hmm? That's why the master Samael Ombeor came and taught sexual magic. In order to cut that connection, as long we are fornicating, as long we are reaching the orgasm and spasm, we are connected through the sexual organs, through Ida, Eve, Hava, Ov, down, and receiving all the negative devolving forces that so many centuries we are receiving and knowing good and evil. Evil is Klippoth, good, Tob. As the Bible said, Tob is related with the tree of life. Remember very well that in the beginning, the book of Genesis says that when thou God created, in the beginning it says, let there be light, and there was light. So when in the beginning God said, <coughs> let there be light, and there was light. It says after that, and God saw that that light was good. Tob. You see? It was Tob in Hebrew. And he continued narrating the seven days of Genesis. And it was good. And it was good every day, except the second. Because the second is related with the vital body, with the sod. In the second day, God doesn't say it is good. The, why? Because Yesod is precisely the tree of good and evil. It depends how you use it. You see? The second day, Yesod, doesn't say it is good. But the third day is good. The fourth is good. The fifth is good. And the sixth is very good. Hmm? Tob is the word in Hebrew. Of course, it's in relation with the Adam, with the creation of Adam, with Pingala, with the solar force, the solar creation. That's why we state we have to create solar bodies. Solar bodies are in relation with the solar forces of Pingala, in which 
the primary forces of the brain act through us in the second womb, which is the medulla. But Eve likes to create in the first womb. Everybody in this world has to have children. If you see that maternal instinct of procreating in this physical world, this is natural. A female cat loves to have kittens, right? A dog also got to have kittens. All of them love that. That's natural in the animal. Of course, if we liked also as human beings, as intellectual animals, we had to have children, we had to learn how to procreate in the human way, which is also enjoyable. But unfortunately, we don't want to learn that because we know how to do it through the animal way. It's easy. Yes, the horses multiply. If the cats multiply in a way, why not us, right? Since we are animals. Of course, this is how the humanity multiplies, through the animal way. And because that maternal instinct in the female is very strong. The woman wants to have a child. She doesn't care if it's through the animal way or to the spiritual way. She just loves to be pregnant hmm? because it's his nature. And we understand that. But, of course, the, both the couple has to learn how to procreate in a human way. And this is precisely what we teach. If we want to disconnect our psyche from the animal level and from Klippath, Because the attempting serpent that acts in our blood connects us all the time to Klippath. We are always tempted. The sexual act, of course, is pleasure. But we have to know how to transmute the sexual matter in order to fecundate the second womb, which is the medulla. And here, that's why it is written that and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Obviously, when Eve, the sexual organ, fornicates, those elements that are attracted by Ida through into the physical body goes up to the brain and infects Adam and that sensation of the orgasm that you feel as, as animal in the sexual act is transmitted to the brain and the brain receives the information of that sensation of that pleasure in Adam's likeness of course but Eve is the first one that eats it, you see? First the organs and transmit that to the brain and Adam says, oh, this is good, pleasurable. Hmm? And then their eyes are open, unfortunately, from evil because the good is already disconnected to them. And they start creating an evil. And what that, what that creation of evil is from Klippoth is called ego. It's called lust, it's called anger, it's called greed, pride, laziness, gluttony, envy, etc., etc., etc. Those are the fruits of klipoth, of the orgasm. No longer the human person, the intellectual animal, creates a man to till the ground of the Garden of Eden, which is the son, but he start creating Cain. It's still Cain, of course, develops from the ground elements that God don't like at all. Hmm? That's why Cain, which is the outcome of fornication, brings to God an offering. Here I'm offering you from Klippoth, from the ground, from the earth, from down the earth, this. And God is, is, is displeased with it. Because God is goodness. 
Once God wants to create within us the man to till the ground. But we're, when Eve falls into the temptation of the serpent, the animal instinct, we develop, of course, uh, evil entities. This is how it is explained in the uh, in mythology. You remember uh, uh, when the man was created by uh, uh, Prometheus, Pandora was sent by the gods. In this case, that Pandora of the Greeks is Eve, in other words, the same thing, the sexual organs. And Pandora opens that box and all the evil things comes into the world. This world is our own psyche, our own physicality. This is it. This is how it enters. We blame also the government for the evil things that are happening in this society. We blame everybody. Meanwhile, those evil things, we always open it every day through our actions, especially with the sexual actions inside of us. That's the ego, the creation of the spasm and the orgasm, animal elements that we have within that we strengthen. In the level at which we are, we shouldn't do it because then we enter into devolution because we, the intellectual animals, are on the top of evolution. When we do that, and then we start devolution. We no longer go up, we devolve. And we attract the elements of devolution, which are from Klipoth into our physicality, and we make a society, a devolving, degenerated society, as the one that we have right now. So that is because everybody is tempted when the body is young, and usually, we fall into temptation. Even if we believe in Jesus with all our heart, we fall into temptation. Even if we sing to Jesus, we fall into temptation. Jesus, of course, is that part of ourselves in our heart that connects us to the delight, to Jahava, to the upper garden of Eden. But unfortunately, we are connected not even to the earth, but to clip path to the infernos. And we have right now the, the creation of that uh, Satan, that uh, devil within, which is very great, very gross. And uh, unfortunately, that is our situation. That's why it is written, and the eyes of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Hmm? They were naked because no longer the good of God were in them. Before they were nurtured with the tree of life. Now when they fornicated, their eyes were opened, and they became naked. Without knowledge of the superior. And they sewed fig leaves together and made them a prunes. See, the, the leaves uh, of the fig tree, as uh, uh, we explain, the fig tree is related with the sexual feminine forces. That's why in the Bible, in the Gospel, you find that Jesus of Nazareth condemned or damned a fig tree because it was asking for figs, but the tree was dried. I mean, this is a sexual organs. This is where you have to understand. The fig tree symbolizes the sexual organs, the feminine forces. That's why Adam and Eve, when they did this, they started protecting themselves with fig trees because the leaves of the fig tree are the ones that give shade. Shade, which means clip off. So they were covering, of course, their sex with clipotic forces, with of fornication, because the fig tree was used in the wrong way. And this is how we cover our, our, our shame before God. We, in this physical world, look for titles, look for this, look for that, in order to have success in this physical world, 
in order to hide our shame of nakedness. Before, the sexual organs were acting in the right way. We were transmuting the sexual force, but now that we've sinned, we cover them with fig trees, with the shades, in other words, of clip pot, or the forces of, of, of uh, hell, inferno. And they heard the voice of Jehovah walking in the garden. Hmm? Of course, still you feel that in your physical body is a force of God. When you are, in, as a human soul, in the garden, you feel the life. Because it's still the body is with life. God is within the physical body. In the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hide themselves or hid themselves from the presence of Jehovah among the trees of the garden. Well, you see the trees of the garden, I mean, all the elements that we have in the physical body. And Jehovah called unto Adam and said unto him, You see, your own reason, where art thou? And he said, I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? It's obvious that God within knows if the soul is afraid, if his own energy is no longer with the soul. The soul is afraid because God is not with, with, with him or with it. And who told you that? Do that. And it says, the man said, the brain. The brain says in this case, you see, the man, the brain says, the woman whom thou givest to be, to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did it. Or I says, well, the sexual organs that you put in my body show me how to eat, and I eat it. You see, the brain and the sexual force. Obviously, that happens with where because the sexes were divided, because of the division of sexes. And the Lord God said unto the woman, unto the sexual organ, What is this that thou hast done? Did you fornicate it? Did you ejaculate it, the water? And the woman said, well, the blood that came through the liver, whatever, the serpent, beguile me, beguile me, and I did it. Hmm? This is precisely the excuse that all of us have. Well, you know, I, I feel the desire inside my body, and I don't know what to do. And so I masturbated, I fornicated, I just spilled the force. And the brain, of course, is the one that receives the effects. And God is in the brain, the three atoms, and realizes that. What's going on in this garden? The atom of the Holy Spirit, the atom of the Father, and the atom of the Son, which are in the pituitary gland, and the pineal gland, and in the magnetic center of the root of the nose, in the brain, realizes that and that's why he says, Adam, what's going on with you in the brain? You are no longer wise. And says, well, the sexual force down there, my sexual organs, somehow throw me something from below and I'm dumb. dumb. I'm, I'm afraid. And then goes into the sexual organs. Oh, well, so you fornicated. You infected the brain. Because the serpent beguiled you. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon the valley shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. This is what we're doing. The sexual force, because acting in that way, we go down into Glipoth, and we are just gathering into the mouth of the earth. 
we are receiving through the sexual action of the serpent of fornication uh, all of this. And this is, of course, this is, uh, the serpent is damned because of that. In other words, the sexual force that when we fornicate, we fall into that damnation. <coughs> and we are damned because of that action until we stop doing it. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. You see? It doesn't say it against the brain. Against thee and the woman. Which means I will put enmity, problems there, between this blood that enters through the liver and the spleen, etc., and the sexual organs. That's a problem now because we are open it. Even if we start doing the work, it's an enmity here. Listen, what is the enmity? It says, and between thy seed and her seed. What is the seed of the serpent? In this case, the seed of the serpent is lust, anger, pride, enmity, all of that which we have within. That is the seed of the serpent. And the seed of the woman, which is Hava, of course, is that when we learn how to transmute. It refers to that sexual organ that knows how to transmute, that knows how to be in chastity. That enmity is in each one of us. We receive the knowledge of good and evil. We start transmuting. We know how to be connected with Tov, with good. But unfortunately, we created a lot of evil inside. And now it's enmity. Or what Paul of Tarsus says in the gospel. I want to do the good, but I do the evil. Something inside of me does something that I don't like to do. The spiritual man in me wants to do the things of God, but the devil in me wants to do the clipotic things. But who is the fault? I mean, on, on, on whom is this fault falling? In us. There's an enmity that we have between this tempting serpent of eating, which is the orgasm, which is lust, which is the Kundabhafi organ, and the Kundalini. Now we have to work. We have to kill, to disintegrate the seed of the serpent, which we created not only in this life, but in other lives. Because we bring that seed, which is the ego, from past lives. And the seed of the woman, which in this case is that woman, is that force, sexual force that knows how to transmute. That brings, of course, the Divine Mother, Kundalini. I remember that the Divine Mother Kundalini polarizes also negatively. It's called Kali. If you fornicate, that force goes down. That's the enmity. The serpent tempted of Eden is the seed of evil. But the serpent that healed the Israelites in the wilderness is the woman, the positive force that goes up and that creates in the spinal medulla, which is the second womb. And of course, unto the woman, he said, in this case, this uh, damnation comes into the female body. But also, the men sometimes receive it, the, the male organ, I mean, the, the male... Uh, he says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. If you follow that, Adam rule, rule the sexual organ, should rule. When you receive the knowledge, then the brain is to start controlling the sex. Because when the sex, when Eve controls Adam, there's lust. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when you start, of course, uh, uh, creating children inside within you spiritually, with pain you create it. Because there's a lot of lust, a lot of sins within you that you have to defeat, which comes from your own chava, your own sexual feminine organ, your sexual organ. And of course, 
Adam must control the sex, should rule over you. And that's precisely what we want, to rule over Hava. Uh, when you utilize, when we comprehend the knowledge that. And also, if you, because if you translate this literally, you might say, oh, well, the man has to rule the woman in, in, in home, right, in, in the couples. But if you see reality in, in any couple, in any part of the world, the man doesn't control the woman. It's the woman that controls the man, always. It's always like that. And if the man says, no, I want to put my foot down there and I want to control her, you can you be, be frank. You cannot do it. Control yourself first. Because this is how, if you control your own Chava, then you control your own wife. But if you don't control your own wife, your own Chava, your own sexual organ here, how are you going to control the feminine force that has more strength? Because the feminine body has more strength because it attracts more the force of the cosmos. The feminine body is, is passive. Even though we physically are more strong, but really the internal psyche of the, of the woman is stronger than of the male. But this, this commandment or this statement here, that desire shall be to thy husband, <clears throat> means that what the brain says is what it has to do. But if you feel the desire in your sexual organ, that means that the blood from the past, from your animal level, is now nourishing there, is tempting you to the sexual organ. If you follow Hava, if you feel Eve and eat of the fruit, when are you going to start commanding your own body? The brain has to do it. Because to the brain, to the knowledge that we learn, is how we control and learn how to transmute the sexual energy. And to the brain, he said, which is Adam, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, because thou, thou hast hearkened unto the voice of your sexual organ, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, you shall not eat of it, Curse is the ground, the physical body, for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it in all the days, in all of the days of your life. Etc., etc. And of course, after that happened, when the brain follows the scene of Adam and Eve, I mean, with the sin of Eve, when Adam is following the, the voice of his wife, which is a sexual organ, <coughs> and then they are kicked out. Out of the Garden of Eden. Of course, that means that before we were not eating from that tree, we were enjoying receiving the forces of Eden, which is the vital body, the ethereal body, and the senses of the tree of life. We were connected with the internal world. But since we start eating from the tree of good and evil, which is the sexual organ, then we are, of course, kicked out from the internal worlds. Still, we have the vital body. But there are people in this physical world that no longer listen, no longer are connected with the internal worlds, with the delight of that, of the superior worlds. There are people that don't even believe in God. Even though, thanks to the three primary forces of God, they are alive physically. But they don't believe in any creation, in any God. Because they are disconnected. They are no longer connected. The vital body is dis dis dislocated completely. Scarcely they can sense the vital body. No longer the astral, mental, causal, and all the sephiroth above. So therefore, we are psychologically and physically speaking out of the garden, out of Yesod, out of the superior parts, which is because the garden of Eden is also that delight. And the garden of Eden below is Yesod, pleasure. So we are out of the two gardens. 
There are people that think that only this physical world is what is the reality. And all those internal worlds, superior worlds, is just illusion. So obviously, this society is kicked out of the Garden of Eden. We are identified with this physical world that is completely connected to Klippoth, to hell, to the inferno. This is how we are uh, kicked out. In the ancient times, when this humanity, where the whole humanity was in the Garden of Eden of nature, which is Yesod, the fourth dimension, Malkut, which is the physical body, was within Yesod. We're one. You see? Physical body and vital body, Malkut and Yesod, were one garden. But when that humanity fornicated and fell into what we already know, fornication, then Malkut fell from Yesod. And now Yesod is where it is, but Malkut is no longer with it, but below. Malkut is a fallen sephira. The whole planet is fallen. Our physical body is fallen. What we have to do is now to connect that physicality to Yesod, to the Garden of Eden, which is pleasure, by knowing how to transmute our sexual energy. Little by little, the physical body will reconnect. But for that, we have to disconnect, you see, the Ida, Hava, serpent, that goes to Glipot, we have to disconnect it. Which is the way to disconnect that? By no longer fornicating. By stop, stopping the fornication, the orgasm, the spasm. This is how we cut the connection with Glipot, and then we start connecting to Tob, to do what the Genesis says, and this is what's good. Because we ate, or we have been eaten, from the tree of good and evil in evil, long time, centuries, eons. Now we have to stop, forget about, and start eating in the good way, in order to reconnect our psyche with Tav, with the good part. And this is how we will return into eating below, in order to reconnect ourselves with Jahava, which is in that, Eden above. But for that is a long journey. We have to know how to connect that, that. And for that, of course, is, as you know, we gave many lectures. How to reconnect all, all again, because the soul comes from that. That's the Ruach Elohim, part of that Ruach Elohim. From that comes. But we are now, as the Bible says, in exile. In Egypt. Because Egypt is Malkut. It's not Egypt in the Middle East, no. It's this physical body, Mazarim. This is precisely the symbol of that. And we are in exile. To return that, we need willpower. We need the power of Moshe, Moses, who symbolizes willpower. He is the only one that can take us out of this misery in which we are. We have to develop our own particular individual Moshe, Moses. Do you have questions? Uh, that that you're talking about, is that the Hebrew word T-O-B as in Mazel Tov? Yeah, yeah. T-O-B, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov means good. Uh -huh. It's good. Now, uh, evil in Hebrew is Ra, but not Ra as in Israel, you know, it's because the uh, Ra in Israel is only the letter Resh, which means positive. But Ra, evil, is Resh plus the letter Ajin. That's evil, Ajin and Resh. Of, of that uh, evil that we are talking here, because you know in Hebrew uh, the pronunciation of the of, of the words are very uh, different than in English. So when you said ra, 
it could uh, explain uh, evil from Klippoff. Resh Ajin, but is Rael is only with Resh. This is positive. And this is precisely the Ra from the ins of Or, which is the solar force. That's the Resh. But if you add that Ra, the Ajin, and then that Ra falls into Klippoff. And that's evil. Yeah, there's the Ra of Egypt. Ra of Egypt, the solar force, is only the Resh, the letter Resh of Israel. Also, when you write Israel, is uh, Yod Shin Ish, which means fire. Ra of the solar force, Ish Ra, means the fire of the solar force. El is God. But if you take that Ra in the wrong way, and then Israel falls into Egypt. When Israel falls into Egypt, when it's in exile, and then that R has the Ayin, which means the word evil, Ra, evil. This is what you have to understand in order to comprehend, because in Gnosticism, we utilize very much the word Ra. It could be positive or negative. Yeah? Enhance the sexual act, you mean, yes. to prolong it? Yes, to prolong it, to have uh, multiple orgasms, so to speak. Oh, well, all of those uh, teachings that you find in different places of how to prolong, to enhance the sexual act, of course, is a doctrine of uh, Satan, is a doctrine of the ego from Klippoth. It's a lot of individuals that are awakening evil and for evil, and that teach that. Of course, if you enhance the sexual animal activity, uh, you awake in Klippoth completely, and you become an inhabitant. Because right now we are here in Malkut. But if you awake in that way that you are explaining the enhancement of the sexual energy, which in this day and age, of course, is very common. They are teaching prostitution, homosexuality, lesbianism, all of that is in order for you to completely inhabit Klippoth, hell, to go there completely. Hmm. Of course, uh, uh, just by knowing how to uh, act positively in a sexual way is how we are can disconnect. But unfortunately, we have uh, uh, a lot of information, negative information, in the internet, in the TV, in the schools, colleges, everywhere, that teach you how to enhance uh, your uh, sexual negative energy. Is it possible for the right way, the positive information, to, to get to people more? It just seems so hopeless. Uh, it seems like such a few people are going to ever become aware that everything we've been taught is wrong. Because that those systems continue to regenerate and degenerate and, uh, and fight even better to hold on to, to the few they have, to the many they have, actually. I mean, I, I think about it all the time. I used to belong to uh, other centers, and we used to hand out pamphlets and talk to people and try to get them to read the books. And it was very difficult. You know, I'm wondering beyond what we as people can do, you know, is there is there going to be something divine, uh, some divine intervention? Uh, is that possible to, to perhaps reach more people than we can? Well, yeah, it, it's precisely what we are trying to, to do. 
we are, of course, doing the impossible eh, to reach as many people as we can in order to receive this information. But unfortunately, uh, the hypnotic power of the tempting serpent of Eden is very powerful. And this tempting serpent of Eden have hypnotized them and teaching them that it's okay. As you say there, you shall not die, he said. But you will be of knowing good and evil. Yeah, we know good and evil now, but the only way of uh, stopping dying or being in the curse of dying is by transmuting the sexual energy, by defeating the temptation. And there are many uh, groups that uh, are there in the outside world uh, from different religions that they really sing to the Lord, they love the Lord, but they don't do anything for the Lord because they are taught in their own way. To spread this and to explain this is necessary. But some of them are even afraid of listening to the word Gnosis or the word Kabbalah because uh, the enemy, secret enemy, has really spread a lot of uh, nonsense. And they comprehend uh, uh, a little bit about what is written in the Bible. And they are afraid. They think that this knowledge that we're teaching here is from the devil. Mm -hmm. This is a specialist. So only those that are wise will escape from this. Many are called and few are chosen. That is a, an axiom, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, um, is it that and also uh, is the secret enemy also those who know about the teachings but do whatever it takes to deceive humanity yeah not the secret enemy of course are those that uh, uh, decisively are awakening evil in Klippoth and they are deceiving humanity and they are working for it so we have to work against us first and against them after but really by working against us is enough because they connect to every ego of every person in Klippoth to their negative actions. But if we act against our ego, we disconnect from them. Little by little, of course, because we have a lot. Yeah? <coughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. That's why we have to work with the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. First factor is to do what we are explaining here, transmutation of the sexual energy, chastity. Second is to disintegrate those elements which always act. Those elements are there. It's lust in us. That's the devil inside of us. That lust doesn't care about this doctrine. It wants to fornicate. It's an animal element that we have. And it will fight against, that's why it says, I will create an enmity between your seed and the seed of the woman. And it's precisely the seed of the woman in this case is when we learn how to transmute, that the good seed, right? Which is Christ. But the seed of the serpent is there, which is a lot of psychological lustful elements that we created. Now we have to defeat them. And for that, we need to comprehend them, to meditate, to analyze, and to disintegrate them. And the one that has the power to do that is the woman, the sexual force, to stand on top of the head. Because the woman was that created that, the sexual organ. So by learning that, little by little, is how that woman will squeeze the head of that serpent, which in his seed. That woman, of course, is our own energy that will rise in the spinal column, the kundalini, the positive seed of God, because the negative is the serpent, fornication, the tempting serpent. In other words, when we start in this work, we always are before two serpents. The tempting serpent of Eden that is all the time before us, every time, during the day. And 
the serpent of bronze that was healing the Israelites in the wilderness, which is the divine mother in the spinal column. And that's precisely the great work, the great fight that any initiate has all the time until he dies completely on the cross and defeats completely that force, then he resurrects. But during the path of the cross, you find there Judas, Pilate, Caiaphas, and a lot of people which are the ego against the work that we are doing. We are carrying the cross patiently and receiving spits, receiving here, there, not only from the outside world, from inside. And we want to advance, but we created, unfortunately, a lot of negative things, evil, because we ate from the fruit. And now patiently we have to, with the help of Christ, to go up to the Golgotha, the hill of the skull, which is precisely the head, and there to work, because in the hill of the skull is where the Lord is crucified. From here in the brain and the head, we meditate, comprehend all that evil that we have. Because in the right is the good thief that steals the energy, right, for the Lord. You shall be with me in this day in the paradise, is what the Lord says. But to the left is the evil thief, which is that ego that we have that utilizes the sexual act on the cross only for animal satisfaction. He doesn't care. He says, well, if you really are the son of God, well, save me too. And the Lord says, no, I won't save you. I will annihilate you inside of us because this is what the evil thief has to be annihilated. It belongs to the animal level. And this is it. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,